Welcome to Demo Day. My name is Doug Bertram. Uh, I'm with Metafile Information Systems. Uh, I'm going to walk you through uh, our MedViewer solution for GP to revolutionize your accounts payable process. Um, I will go through uh, kind of a PowerPoint here, kind of give you a five minute overview of the solution. And then we're going to spend some time in the actual product uh, looking at uh, how things go through there. We'll talk about a couple different types of, P uh, types of invoices that we process and we account for. And uh, we'll kind of walk you through it. So uh, as a company, Metafile, we've been doing this for 45 years as a document management company. Uh, very tight integration with the Microsoft GP and all, all of the Microsoft Dynamics family of products, as a matter of fact. Um, we do real-time integration with it. So if you add to your, your uh, vendors, you add uh, account codes or anything like that, it's immediately available in our solution. Um, we can do more than AP. Today, we're going to kind of focus on how we... Uh, process invoices and how we, uh, you know, kind of work with the, with the solutions and bringing that, bringing you that efficiency visibility uh, to your um, uh, to your financial system, and then we'll also kind of maybe touch base a little bit on some reporting and some some audit audit reports and things like that. Uh, we'll kind of go through all that. So with that, let's uh, hop over to the next slide here. Uh, so really, like I said, a lot of clients, uh, they, they like to focus on AP automation to begin with. So historically, we've kind of built uh, built everything to scratch for clients. And about 12, 15 years ago, we realized that there was so much interest in AP automation, that tight integration with your GP system, that we built the best practices approach to AP. And so now when we load the software, we can load that, that default solution. And that's what I'm going to walk you guys through today. Um, at the end, I will give you a... Um, a uh, a slide that kind of has some of our contact information so you can kind of reach out and we can kind of maybe talk to you one-on-one -on -one and, and kind of really walk through your specific uh, uh, applications. But today we're gonna to focus on AP automation. Uh, once you get that up and running, we can certainly leverage it for uh, accounts receivable, order processing, uh, HR, contracts, all kinds of different documents that we can process. As it relates to AP, we really try to capture the document as soon as it comes into the organization, whether it be paper or electronic. And I would say post COVID, most clients and most vendors are sending things electronically. They're sending them to an email box that we watch. We then automatically pull in those attached PDFs. Uh, we feed them right into an intelligent recognition service that basically uses uh, artificial intelligence to analyze the document and extract all the information. So we use that information to index or identify what that document's all about in our system. But ultimately, uh, once we've processed them, we're gonna push them over to your Microsoft Dynamics GP solution. Uh, so you don't have to keep the information over there as well. So that's really where you start to get some efficiency gains. Uh, your people don't have to do so much data entry and uh, you can leverage their, their time and talent for things like uh, reporting and doing some vendor spend analysis and things like that. But the invoices come in, they go right into that intelligent recognition for the data to extract. If you do get still still get some paper, um, you're just gonna have to digitize them somehow. You're gonna use kind of copier or scanner and scan it to the email box that we're watching. And then we pull those documents in and process them really the same as we do the ones that come right from the email box. So workflow, uh, that's kind of where we do all the processing in the, in the solution. We really separate documents as to two different types, uh, essentially whether they're related to a purchase order or not. So if we pull a purchase order number off of the invoice, we specify the invoice as being a PO invoice type. We then uh, go through a series of checks and balances to compare that to what's still open against that PO for that vendor. Uh, do we have receipts to match to? And if everything winds up being a perfect match, we can push that transaction right over to GP and nobody really needs to touch it in, in MetaViewer. Uh, if it doesn't match, if it wasn't a perfect match or there was some, some kind of discrepancy there, then that's where we have a workflow that interacts with the purchase order information in real time with your GP system so that the user can figure out why it didn't match automatically. Uh, either adjust the purchase order or adjust the invoice. Uh, and then once it's reconciled, they can push that over to Dynamics as well. Invoices that aren't related to a purchase order, those are a little bit harder to, uh, to automate. Um, but we, the way we try to do that is uh, we can talk to the vendor card within GP. Um, if you've got default account codes set up there, we'll, we'll code the invoice to those default account codes. You can accept it, change it, add to it, however you want to code up that invoice, um, and then route it for approvals. Uh, so if, if you want people to take a peek at it, uh, we can specify multiple levels of approval if required. And then once those invoices have been fully coded and approved, then they get pushed over to GP. 
And then you're going to post those documents for payment, just like you do today. You just didn't have to key any of that information in. Uh, our standard interface is a browser. Uh, it has been for many, many years. Uh, basically, users, when they uh, get added to the system, you say, what is their role in your organization? That's what controls what they have the rights to see and do. And they do everything right from that browser window. We do offer the solution as an on-premises solution or a hosted solution. Uh, I would say most of the, most clients today are really leaning towards that hosted application. Uh, but if you choose to um, put the, the, the system on your servers and your organization, we can support that as well. Uh, functionally, there really is no difference between the two systems. It's really just a matter of uh, the kind of the pricing model, I guess, and uh, whether you want to take care of the servers or you want us to do that. So all the integration with Microsoft uh, Dynamics GP is all built into the product. There's no extra charge for any of it. And it's all real time. I kind of said that a couple of times. Uh, we, get, we get the information as we need it. Um, and that's really nice for you because there's no syncing up that has to happen. We go get it as we're processing that invoice and get the, the, the data as it exists at the time where we're, we're asking for it. So that's what this entire solution does. With that, I'm going to jump over to my virtual machine and kind of walk you through some products. All right, so I'm in MetaViewer. I'm on my homepage here. Um, like I said, when you add people, uh, you're going to specify their roles. This user's got probably a few more roles than, than normal. I kind of minimize how much I have to log in and log out. And I can show some extra optional things like expense reports or requisition processes that we have. But really, this is my dashboard. I come in here in the morning. If I do a lot of stuff in MetaViewer, I'll look at this dashboard. If everything is a zero, great. I don't have anything to do. If it changes to a three or a nine or a 17, there might be something in those queues that require my interaction. I can click on it and go in there and take care of my work. So we're watching that email box. We pull the invoices in. They feed up to that intelligent recognition engine that's going to extract the data. And then they're going to show up in the product here. Uh, probably if, if they do require interaction, they're going to uh, appear in this preparation queue here where I've got 17 documents. Once they've either been processed through the system, either automatically or through the user interaction, and we hand them off to GP, they're going to get routed to this waiting for payment queue down here where I have nine documents in there. Um, that way, we can communicate with GP periodically. And once we get the payment information, we're going to pull that back. We're going to add that to the document, the information we extracted out of it, how it was coded, what PO items it matched to. And then all of that stuff can be found with these fine payables in process and complete, these searches here to really have a form you fill out and you can search for anything in the product, wherever it may be. So let's just kind of walk through a couple of these real quick. Uh, so waiting for payment. Um, I've got some invoices here. I'm just going to open up this Metro business equipment invoice. So when this invoice came in and it fed up to that intelligent recognition, we did extract the PO. Over here on the right is kind of an audit trail area. You can see all the checks and balances that we succeeded at. We found that it was a valid PO. We found some receipts to match to, receipt 1166 here. Everything tied out. It was a perfect match. So we pushed this over to GP, and now it's just waiting for the payment information to come back. Uh, this information right here, we'll pull that back from GP and then archive it away uh, and then have it be searchable. If I hop over to my preparation queue, that's where invoices that don't match automatically, they, they begin their journey here. A lot of non-PO invoices are going to start their process here, but down here at the bottom, I've got a few PO invoices that weren't processed automatically. So let's look at one of those real quick. Uh, so over here, it succeeded on some rules, other rules it didn't, uh, it didn't succeed. And basically, it tells me that this invoice wasn't a perfect match for the receipts that we matched it. We did find the PO. It is a valid PO invoice. So if I click the code and reconcile here, I'm going to communicate with GP to pull back what's available to match to. So a couple of receipt, receipt 1165 here. Looks like we've received 20 red shirts and 15 yellow shirts. I'm off by $75 in the lower right-hand corner. If I looked at this invoice, we're being invoiced for 20 red shirts. So this one's a simple fix. I'm just gonna erase the yellow shirts because they don't apply to this invoice. I now tie out and I can push that trend, hit reconciled and push that over to GP. And presumably we'll eventually get an invoice for the yellow shirts and uh, they will either match automatically to the, to the invoice when it comes in, or I can come in through here and uh, figure out why it didn't match. So other things, in, in, in addition to removing lines that don't apply to the invoice, you may need to adjust the, the quantity. Uh, you might not need to adjust the unit cost uh, to process that invoice and uh, move it along. Okay, so I'm gonna say reconcile. We're gonna push that over to GP. 
And now we're going to switch gears and we're going to look at an invoice that isn't related to purchase order and walk you through that process. So let's take uh, this computer training system ones. So we did uh, pull all the information off the invoice. You can see highlighted in yellow. If I hover over it, you can see where that intelligent recognition found all the values for the invoice. You can also notice on the form here, the values with this little icon, that's where we're extracting that information, all the pertinent information to be processed. This time when I hit code and reconcile, it's gonna communicate with uh, the GP vendor card and pull back the default account codes. And you can see here, we apply the pay and the purchase account from the vendor record. If the accounting is different, I can add additional rows. I can type a few characters of an account number and it communicates in real time with the chart of accounts to only allow me to pick valid coding uh, combinations. And if I, I can also do by cost of goods sold, I can do by description as well. So I can kind of search in either event, right? So I say coded, my system will remember for the parameters of, of this document, who are the default approvers? And so you can see here when this LUD document loads, that it specified department 100 as my approver. If I hit the drop down, I could change it if it's different this time. You guys will tell us what you want for approval codes here. Uh, some people use people here. I kind of like more of the department manager VP level uh, for each cost center and things like that. But I can't specify multiple approvers, but then if everything looks good, I say send for approval and that's immediately placed in my approver's queue. My approver can get emails, uh, maybe once a day or once a week, we'll check everybody's queue. And then we can kind of send them a single email rather than an extra e email for every invoice. You have three payables. Here's a link to your queue. Here's a link of everything to everything that's in your queue, if you'd like that. Good log out. Let's look, go look at what the approver would see. And Joe is my department 100 guy. So if I go over to him, He's got his approval queue up here where he's got four invoices. The one I just sent him is here at the bottom. Um, so each step of the way, we control who has the rights to see and do what. So we've made a lot of fields uh, read only. I don't want him changing the vendor or the invoice number or things like that. The coding down here, uh, this really varies from client to client. Most clients don't want the approvers to change the coding because they don't really know what they're doing. Uh, otherwise, some, some clients want the approvers to either do the coding or change it if the defaults are incorrect. And then this, this grid can be editable like it was in the first step. But if everything looks good, he's going to click approve and it's going to record that over here in the audit trail that he approved it. Other things he can do, do not pay, return to AP, not mine, different things like that. So essentially what he does on paper today, he does it at the click of a button. He says approve, it stamps his approval and then sends that either to the next approver or if there are no more approvers, it will go back to AP to a queue that we call final review. So I got final review. If I rejected one, it would go there. If I returned, uh, it goes there, reassign. If I say not mine, it goes there. Uh, but if I go into final review, this gives me one last chance to look at this document before I um, uh, send it to GP. I could uh, collaborate with some other people by adding a note and, and tagging them over here or I could send it to another approval, uh, another approver if I want somebody else to check into it or something along those lines. But if everything looks good, I'm gonna say export to ERP, and then we're gonna hand that transaction over to GP, and then you're gonna post it for payment just like you do all the other invoices, okay? Like you do today, all right? Now, real quick, lastly, I'm kind of talking about searching here. If I do find payables, this is really a smart form. I can kind of, uh, you know, put in whatever parameters I'm looking for. And this is smart. So if I hit the Fabricam, I got 34 documents that meet that criteria. Of those 34, uh, 20 are non-PO, 10 are PO invoices. And I just keep choosing what I want. I can search by GL and I PO items, payment information, date ranges, et cetera. When I say search, if there's only one qualifying document, it would open up. In this case, I have lots of documents here and I can use this to analyze my data. Like if I was, if I search by vendor, I could export all that to a CSV so I could do some analysis or I can download all the, uh, select multiple documents and download a whole bunch of documents for like an auditor or something like that to, to be able to review. Okay, so let's hop back over to my PowerPoint and make that full screen again. Uh, so really that's that's kind of what the AP solution does, just really a quick overview of it. Um, you can, as I said, you can expand the system. We have some pre-built packages for expense report processing, requisitions, payment batches, journal entries, uh, and then things outside the AP like HR contracts, AR and things like that. So uh, here's 
our contact information. If you'd like to kind of talk a little bit one -on more one-on-one -on -one and kind of walk through the system in a little bit more detail, uh, shoot us an email at info at metafile.com. But uh, I think that completes my presentation for today. I appreciate everybody's time today and uh, good luck. I look forward to talking with all of you.